All righty, guys and gals, here we go. I don't have a comment menu yet, but there we go. It's up and running. So we'll just kind of chill until uh, we get everybody checked in. And I'm going to get this shared up on my page real quick. Maybe. All right, we've already got people checking in. What's happening, guys and girls? Oh, let's see. Hang on a second. I'm going to try to get this shared here. All right. John, hey, what's happening? Daryl Stilson, hey. Oh, get off that. Wow, let's see. Wesley Olson, first one to join. John, Susan Young, Ginger Renshaw. What's happening, Ginger? Well, that could be Chris sneaking in under Ginger's name. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Paul McGinnis Kelly, Trip Harrison. Little John, Liaison Knowles. GT, Dennis Has, Daryl Stilson. I already said Daryl. Got you, Daryl. David Swanson. Rich Dean, Shane Gunno. Trip, what's happening, man? <laughs> Jonathan Clark, Clark, haven't talked to you in a while, Jonathan. John Shears in the house. Brian McGinnis, Cody Pollard. Hey, John, how are you, man? Quincy Simon joined. Like usual, we'll just let everybody kind of get checked in, and I'll kind of get myself organized. And here in a couple minutes, we'll uh, we'll get rolling. We're two minutes in, so I don't need to pop that yet. Got a little fat tire going tonight. And uh, Quincy, what's happening? Good to see you. Thanks for checking in from Kansas. Hopefully we'll be coming down your way to do some gravel this year. We can find gaps in our schedule. <laughs> hey, Ginger. <laughs> Sean and Michael's in the house. So I, you know, I don't have anything in here, but the, you know, these are just some of the oddball things that um, every time my kids go on vacation, they come back with goofy shot glasses. So you know, this one's kind of obscene. I don't know where that one came from. I don't know where either of these came from. That one says that, and naturally, it's a toilet. So I think it'd be, I don't know, it's kind of hard to drink out of. I think so. I think that was just going to be for show, and then I'll, you know. I'll turn this one around later. So, Casey Anderson from Ponca City. What's happening? James Daniel. Hey, James. Ryan Husselberg and Forrest Smith out in Wisconsin. It's probably freezing balls out your way. So, glad you're, uh, glad you're creeping, checking in, Forrest. And when you come down for break this year, be sure and give me a holler. We'll make sure we get you out and go ride. Jack Christian, what's happening? Okay, we're about four minutes in. We'll still have people checking in, but uh, we got a we got a full house, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get ripping through here. Um, some of the stuff is uh, I'm gonna repeat, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go through pretty quickly. But um, so I, I guess just first, welcome, welcome to the weekly wizard update. Um, I'm Corey. At least I think most of you guys probably know me. So, uh, the wizard and, uh, kind of, kind of started this thing back up again. I've been doing it pretty solid for about a year. And then I took a little bit of a break this, this past year. And so got this thing kicked back up last week to, uh, introduce the, um, the 2020 tour to dirt schedule and, um, come back with a follow up week and topics for this week. Uh, quick change at Turkey mountain. I'm uh, going to go over, uh, I'm going to do a quick schedule overview immediately following that. So again, just a, a quick repeat of, uh, of last week, but I'm going to go through it a little bit more quickly. Um, upcoming events uh, and things going on and things in my world. I'm sure there's other things out here, but I'm just kind of throwing down some things that are kind of in my space. Um, you know, and if you guys have other events as I'm talking about this, be sure and throw them in the comments because 
they may be things of interest to me or the people that are watching. So yeah, so be sure and toss those comments out. Uh, category change. Um, I'll do more explaining on this, but this is something that um, I've been thinking about. And I thought it would be interesting to throw the question out to you guys and get your perspective on it. Uh, typically, I handle things behind closed doors. Um, I reach out to my board and um, a few or you know, handful of people that might be directly involved in, in the question or the particular decision. And, uh, and I'll make a decision and just kind of give it to you. Um, I thought it'd be interesting. Um, I have um, mixed feelings on this particular one, but I thought I'd throw it out to you guys and just get, uh, get all you guys' opinion. And then the last thing, racing starts in two months. A little longer than two months, but two months basically. Two months and a week-ish, two weeks maybe. So uh, something like that. Uh, two months sounds reasonable. So what have you guys been doing to get ready? That's the question, and that's the topic. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk about some of those methods and tips and tricks and, 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 and things that um, I've been doing and, uh, and see what you guys, guys have been doing. Ah, oh, we've got several people checking in here. Ah, Forrest, Forrest uh, answered my question a minute ago. I said he's, from, he's, uh, he's up in Wisconsin now, and he said, yes, it's freezing there, so. <laughs> Come down to Oklahoma for break, and we'll, we'll get you some riding in. Cami McDougal checked in. What's happening, Cami? Barry Diffendaffer, how are you? Heidi Blackman, Scott Hutchins from Big TX. Uh, Kevin Bates. Heidi Blackman, what's happening, Heidi? All right. First topic, Turkey Mountain. Quick change. Um... You, you, you might have noticed um, I, I kind of blew it off a little bit last week when I was talking about the schedule, and that was mostly because I had a plan. But uh, Cody Pollard chimed in when we were going over the schedule, and, and he popped a comment in and said, um, Oz Epic Rides in Arkansas was the same weekend as Turkey. How the hell I missed that? I don't know. I spend, like, I spend weeks combing through all the event pages, um, to make sure that I don't have conflicts and I've avoided this and avoided that and stuck, you know, races in between these two events and, <sighs> and, and I missed epic rides. So, um, I, yeah, so I knew we were probably going to have to make a change, but I didn't want to discuss that last week because it would have just blurred the whole thing. Um, uh, mainly the whole point was just about the release. So, so, uh, immediately hit up Ray, um, and my board uh, and our officials and um, threw out a couple of quick options. Uh, the two options were um, the, Oct the October date before the 11th, which is the fourth and the October date after the 11th, which I don't know, I'd have to look, I don't know, I don't, can't do the math, what, 18th weekend of. Um, and we were looking at, you know, Ray wanted to look at October 4th. So we uh, hit up uh, River Parks to see if they were available that weekend. They are. And barring some other unforeseen event or happening, October 4th will be the new turkey date. So we will move that from the 11th to October 4th. Um, I think that is... Um, so we moved from an OU Texas weekend to an OU OSU weekend, but just football. Maybe uh, maybe Ray will have a big screen TV up there and and uh, let you guys that watch that can can check it out. So so hopefully we'll we'll make that all happen. Um, the plan is still um, upper parking lot. Um, again, the reason for uh, moving the venue location changed from the YMCA to the upper parking lot. Uh, is because of construction that's going to be going on in the YMCA, and we won't be able to use that um, for 2020. Um, I, I think that's going to work. Uh, again, the details and the logistics, I'm not going to go into too, too many details. It's a long way off. Um, there's a lot of thinking that needs to go into that before we, before we do anything, before we uh, release any details. So... Uh, one thing that did come out of the October 4th changes, and uh, we'll work on logistics and possibilities, but, you know, they do that um, yearly camping um, event in the lower parking lot area. 
um, that they do every year. Um, often it's been at the same time as the turkey race, and then sometimes not. It just depends on you know how things play out. Um, it it will be happening at the same time uh, as we have the race, which is the October fourth weekend. So um, they'll do some, uh, you know, we'll do some checking and rail rail check onto that and see if it's a possibility if we can uh, do camping in the upper parking lot as well as the lower and kind of make a combined effort with them. But uh, again, those are all details that'll just play out as things happen. We've got a long way. Um, it's the last last race of the season, so um, as 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 it gets closer and you know towards the end of the season, we'll uh, we'll start getting that wrapped up and and uh, get that information out to you. So. Ah, Barry's been working, stripping cotton. Last time I went out and rode, well, there was bundles everywhere. Everybody seems to be doing that, and I came back with all that cotton, all that stuff from the shaft uh, after it's been cut. It's just floating through the air. Covered my face. It was on my beers, on my bike. So <laughs> it's pretty hilarious. Uh, Chip and Charlotte Smith checked in. Forrest, yes, definitely bring in your bike so you don't have to borrow one and with two wide of bars like last year. <laughs> Derek Pilkington, Hannah Bogaski. How are you, Hannah? Ryan Palumba, Craig McIntyre checked in, Lauren Sharp, Chris Charles, Jetty Harrison. Hey, Craig, well, I got you on the hand. What's the date of your event? Shawnee Gravel Growler. I, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Toss out the date for me. Jetty Harrison, what's happening? Okay, so that's the uh, that's the schedule change, um, Turkey. So if there's any questions, holler. But uh, m my website's not updated yet. Um, I have talked to my web guy, and he's um, supposed to hopefully trying to work on that tonight. Um, if not, he'll get it done tomorrow, and we'll have our website updated. So um, um, until then, I guess just um, I, you know we posted I posted it on Tour to Dirt, and maybe I should post it again. Probably post it again tomorrow uh, morning um, or later tonight, maybe. So, um, so that it's up there. Cause I posted it, uh, last week before I did the show. So it's probably, you know, it's uh, probably down, down low on the threads. So people kind of miss it. Um, but, uh, I don't know, maybe I should pin it to the top if I can figure that out. So anyway, I, I may toss the schedule out on the Facebook page. Uh, maybe try to pin it to the top. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll worry about that tomorrow. That's all right, Jetty. We, uh, it, it'll, it'll be posted. We'll get all the info to you. Um, Jeremy Black, what's happening, Jeremy? A little late, but you're, you, you know, you're just here for the good stuff. Lissa Lutz, what's happening, Lissa? Lissa's doing some pretty cool stuff um, with her, uh, her bike club um, work, um, Nichols Hills area and some of the Nichols, Nichols Hills schools. So I think we did a fundraiser at Bike Lab and um, all goals were exceeded uh, and then some. So I think that uh, went really well and that's a pretty, pretty cool thing. So um, it's awesome. Austin Edgar. <laughs> All right, Jetty. Karen Christian is in the house. What's happening, Karen? We've got quite a few bike lab crew in here. All right. We're in, we're in bike lab and bike lab today. So all righty, let's get on with the uh, schedule recap. I'm going to try to go through this fairly quickly because, like I said, we um, went over this pretty thoroughly last time. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but, um, again, it is new, and some of you probably weren't checked in last time. Maybe you missed the post, and, and like I said, my, my, my website's not quite updated yet. So, so we'll, just, um, we'll just go through the list. Ooh, I wrote big. I don't even think I need my glasses. All right. So let's just rock and roll through this. Um, if you guys have questions about any of the dates, toss me up a question, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll backtrack and talk about it more. Um, February 23rd, Lake Tom Steed. It's out here by me. Trail will be open. Fingers crossed. Uh, this coming weekend, I've got about a mile and three-quarters section uh, of the five mile loop to go. Um, and the connectors in between are already open. So it should be rideable by Sunday. It's definitely rideable. It's just, there's like I said, a mile and a half section that looks sketch. So it's not sketch. It's just, uh, not cleaned up yet. So, 
so we should be good to go and I'll start trying to get some people out uh, riding doing some tours and uh, and out here since uh, for a lot of you guys it's a new trail uh, we have so many new people and we have not had Steve in this race for so many years I think 06 was the last time he raced it so uh, many of you have not even seen the trail so um, we'll we'll get it introduced to you March 1st St. Crispin's uh, again, I mentioned that, you know, we flip flop St. Crispin's and Turkey. Um, Turkey will be closing the season or we moved uh, St. Crispin's up towards the top. Um, a lot of that was workload uh, and camps and stuff that were uh, issues um, f for, um, for, for the Mike and Joanne out at St. Crispin's just because they had so, so much going on during that time of year. Uh, as well as the weather always played havoc with uh, Turkey. Um, so I, we thought it was a natural fit and I think it will work great to flip those two um, that helps out Mike and Joanne as well as it puts a race in March early March when the weather's always you know unpredictable and uh, it, on a course that's very solid um, and it puts turkey at the end uh, where the weather's typically a little bit more predictable and um, yeah so I think it's gonna be good leads into our third race March 22nd which is sooner stampede um, always, always a, a, a good race and interesting course and uh, team warm up cycling team is always doing something cool. I'm sure they'll have something cool again this year. Turnout's always really, really good there. And uh, I'll look forward to that one. Fool's Dozen. I think we're going to do a very similar to course last year. A couple small modifications. Um, I, I enjoyed that course. I thought last year was probably the, the best course they've had since they've, uh, been in the series. Uh, I was pretty stoked about that. Um, got three course. I uh, got three course to be the same. So um, it's good stuff. Again, it's April fifth. Uh, move on to April twenty sixth. Boulder Bash Ponca. Great turnout last year. We've had some crazy weather with Ponca up and down. Hotter than Hades one year. Freezing balls cold the next year, and uh, then. Knocked it out of the park last year with some pretty solid weather and a great turnout. And, um, yeah, good stuff. May 10th, RDR is back for year number two after taking a little bit of a hiatus. RDR, Red Dirt Rendezvous, uh, is out at Lake Draper, Oklahoma City. And um, I think all of you guys are fairly familiar with that course. So it's going to be uh, cool to have that back in. And, again, they've got a lot of options for courses. So don't know what they'll choose, but got plenty of time to prepare for it. September 6th, Lake Carl Blackwell. Again, another interesting course that started out as a very short, easy course. It's still uh, not a really long course, but they've added some neat sections that gives it a, 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 a huge diversity now. Um, there's some hard sections, fast sections, you know, carbon corner sections. So interesting course, cool location. Um, I think you're going to be able to pull a, a, another pretty cool weekend vibe out of it, um, which we always seem to do there. September 27th, Claremore. Uh, Claremore is always one of our uh, two courses. Typically, um, they're given um, Sooner Stampede a run for their money for the uh, most uh, participants. Um, Ponca, Ponca was in that hunt last year, too. So Claremore is another great venue. It's another venue that's, that's just evolved over the, uh, wow, the past two, two three years. Two years, really. Um, I think it's been in existence for three, but the last year and a half have just blown up with what they've done out there with uh, Rory and his crew and course development. And then we're going to finish up October 4th. And again, that was the change from my previous subject. Um, last week, I'd originally scheduled that on the 11th. After talking to all the people involved, we um, decided to move it to October the 4th. Uh, to avoid the uh, um, epic uh, the Oz epic rides, um, that'll be their series race for that one, uh, for that series, and our, is going to be in Bentonville that weekend. So we moved it to the fourth to avoid that. So that's it. So let me see. Uh, Alyssa, Alyssa says Bike Club OKC is a, a matching fund grant from Specialized going on now, supporting Kerr, uh, N H E S. And another school in 2020, check out bikeclubokc.com. So it's in the comments. She made a link to it. So definitely there's a couple of schools um, 
that we're doing uh, that we've kind of got bike club started in um, and uh, go to bikeclubokc.com. It will give you the info. Uh, great cause, great uh, work by uh, uh, many different people. Um, I think, uh, I think Tegan Malone is uh, leading the one at Kerr and um, it's just great. Basically the bike club works to get bikes in school and get, information about bikes into schools with kids and um, so it's a good program it introduces them to cycling at a young age uh, making it where it's not um, as weird as you know we kind of get the the stick for um, it's almost you know it's almost kind of cool to, to 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 do some of these things uh, at, at a young age and we all know how that is kids will avoid a lot of things if you know peer pressured into it by not being cool and uh, so, anyway, it's a very, very neat thing. So, Daniel Lemons, what's happening? Says, can't wait to come race uh, with the Oklahoma folks. Blair Blackwell last year coming from Wichita Falls. Excellent, brother. Yeah, we've got a, well, well Daniel, great. Um, you probably know our, if you don't, uh, we've got a crew down in Wichita Falls that uh, does several of our races. So, um, um, Scott Hutchins actually checked in a minute ago, and you may know him, and and our good old buddy Aaron McDaniel, Big Tex, and uh, love those guys. <laughs> Forrest Smith, Steed equals legendary. So this dates uh, Forrest and I both. Um, we didn't have Strava back then, and in fact, I'm, I don't even think Garmin was had a product back then. So if we had Garmin's or all the other things and Strava back then, I, I venture a guess that Forrest Smith very likely has the KOM at Lake Tom Steve. Just saying. So, so he's legendary. Brandon Bowen, Buster Brown, Gene, Daniel, what's happening? Mr. Yams Garmin himself. <laughs> Lloyd Graham, Bill Novak, Daryl Dosher. I kind of got behind in the comments, man. You guys are rocking it. <laughs> Forest is not really much of a way to make it easier. Um, it just is what it is. <laughs> You're right. They have, I don't know, Forrest, they might have a little bit of an idea. Um, you know, we, we put them, we've got some trails uh, that you haven't ridden yet that are that really, really kind of are, you know, are pretty technical. So uh, pretty impressive what some of our crew have done. Rory Peterson in the house. I was just talking about you, Rory. Greg Grosshands, Joanne Roberts. I was talking about you a minute ago too, Joanne. Dylan Postier, Josh Potts, another Kansas boy. Glad to see you checking in. Hope your kiddos are watching and getting ready for the Dirt Kids Cup. Ah, Rory just finished the Tuesday night shred with the crew. That's awesome. Zachary Hood's in the house. Zachary from Lawton. Ha <laughs> ha, Forest Challenge accepted. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, what did you miss, Zachary? Here, let me repeat. No, I'm just kidding. That's 23 minutes of repeat. You can go back and watch the replay. <laughs> I went over the uh, schedule and uh, I talked about a schedule change for Turkey Mountain. Moved it from October 11th to October 4th. Uh, Chad Van Hosen in the house. Another Ponca guy. We got, we, got a, we got a good Ponca crew rolling today. So, Alan White's up. Alan's got me all... I was geeking out earlier. I haven't figured it out yet, but Alan made a post on Facebook. Apparently, he figured out how to get mountain bikes in Zwift. I don't know what the hell all that's about. I, I haven't read the thread, but um, I, someone sent me a link on how to get that. So I'm going to have to try to figure that out. Apparently, you have to steer. I saw you guys talking about some threads. So you don't just have to ride. You have to steer somehow with your phone. So... That's just kind of weird, but I guess we'll figure it out. Get that angle with the camera there. <sighs> Little John, mandatory down and back will be missing. Yeah, I probably will be missing. Uh... Hey, John, I, uh, I'm probably not going to do the full seven miles. I'm probably only going to do the five-mile loop and, uh, and then do like a um, – use the cut through we've got a cut through uh that cuts the trail and almost in half and uh probably going to do a um probably going to do like you know you know a, 
a lead, a, a beginning uh, lap and then um, short lap and then do a one, two and three lap after that. So, so yeah, even though we did that, I, I think we did that in 05 for sure. Cause I can remember running down that rock face. It's a definite portage. There's no, there's no ride in it for sure. So it will be interesting. Okay. I got, I got off track. Where was I at here? Let me, so upcoming events. So any other questions? I think, I don't think I saw any questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, no questions. Okay. I mean, if you got, if you guys do have questions or comments about the, um, yeah, a little bit of this action too. So I'll drink it out of my F you, you know, glass there. I'll turn it around. It's a little bit offensive, but it is on glass. That was funny. So we'll move to upcoming events. Again, if you guys have upcoming events, uh, be sure and um, hit me up um, that I've missed. So, Tom, I'll answer that in a minute. Let me get to a stopping place. Um, yeah, just, just throw the questions out here. Oh, uh, man, I was going to say something and I lost it. Hmm. <laughs> ah, Forrest, no, nah, you're fine. For, Forrest and little John totally hijacked the uh, WWU, the Weekly Wizard Update. That's that's quite all right, man. These two are legends. Uh, go back to we all go back to Steve way back in the day. Man, I was so green back then. I think it must have been like um, must have been like oh one. I've been riding like a year and a half because I started at the very end of 99, did 99, 2000 and like early, I'd just been riding two years. So it might've been the end of 2000. Dustin Easter, who was just a kid. I mean, a, like a teenager kid at Elk city and uh, I was in Sarah. And so he had been riding um, before me because he started like when he was like 13, 14 and uh he said yeah i got this guy named dave burrell he rides over to steve well, you know, we're gonna go let's go over there we'll, we'll ride with him and check it out and yeah I, I rode that one time and bled twice and told him i'm never coming back and yeah well you see how that turned out so <laughs> Uh, Tom Clark had a question. That's a good question, Tom. Uh, I don't have an answer for that. Um, we won't until it's, uh, close to that. Tom, Tom's question was, uh, RDR at Draper. Any idea about needing to pay? Oops. Someone commented and scooted it up. <laughs> uh, pay for the day use permit for the race, um, for, for the race this year. Um, I, I don't know. Um, just going to have to wait and see how that plays out. That'll be up to the promoters to work with the city and um, the powers that be. I don't even think it's the city. I think they have to permit it through the city, but I think the permit is run through another organization, which is the water works department, something they've got a name, but I can't remember what the exact name is. So I don't know what that plan is, but that's something that the promoters will have to uh, work out with the powers that be. And then uh, when it gets closer, they'll let us know their procedure. So um, whether we pay a little bit extra up front during registration and then we, you know, write down names and pay them a certain amount of money for our participants or whether they, you know, I don't know, or whether, I don't, I don't know what that procedure is going to be. I don't know. Um, and honestly, who the hell knows? Um, I mean, it's already kind of goofy as it is where there's no easy way to, to do it, even if you just want to go ride. Um, but I'm not the one with the answers. And honestly, I don't ride there very often, so it doesn't really <laughs> impact me that much. Um, I suppose if I was a local, it would impact me, but I would find a way to get that pass and call it good. Um, but it's um it, it's a problem and I, I i don't know that it's being addressed but it's probably above my pay grade um so uh because i'm not directly involved with any, any of the organizations that are working with uh maybe i think it's the public works 
division, public utility, public waterworks, maybe. So I do know that they are requiring um, right now to ride permits and you can get those at the marina and there's another place called Ajax. I don't know where those places, I don't know where Ajax is at. Uh, the marina is not open very often, hard to get. Sometimes they're out of tickets. Ajax is probably easier from what I hear. I think it's like 25 bucks a year. I'm not sure what the day fee is. And uh, they are writing tickets for it now. If you come out of the woods on your bike and they see you roll up to their car and cops are in the parking lot, they will ask you if you have your pass. And if you don't, they'll write you a ticket. So is what it is. And I, like I said, I don't know where that's at right now. Uh, ideally, it'd be nice if they would have kiosks out there with little passes like most of the state parks. You fill out a little thing and stick it, stick your money in the pouch and hang the deal on your deal for day pass, but that hadn't happened. Seems like a pretty simple fix, but they didn't ask me. So Ken Kinsella, Kevin Snyder, what's happening? Greg, uh, I think it was, I don't, I don't really know when all it was. I started in 99 and it was in 99, 2000. And then I think there was a break there and then it started up again. Maybe I'm not real sure. Um, I know that I ran the race with a friend of mine um, because of Dave's passing when Dave Burrell passed away uh, in 06, I believe, maybe 05 and 06. And that was the last year we did it. So Alyssa, I don't know the details on that. Um, Alyssa just said, I mean, the this, this same subject from above that I just talked about. So speaking of Draper, have I talked about uh, the permits at Draper? Um, I just did a little bit. And honestly, I think I want to put that on hold because I admittedly don't have all the information on this. Um, I just know what I've read um, and um, what I've heard from a couple of people that are directly involved um, and not the rumor mill. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to state things wrong, um, here publicly. Um, um, I, I, I think some of the things that you do say, um, Alyssa asked, um, you know, she heard that most of the permit goes to OEF. Is that correct? Um, I, I it's not as straightforward as that. Um, I think, I, I think the idea is that yes, some of that, maybe even a lot of those permits could go to OEF. That is the hope. Um, we would love for that to happen. Um, but I think there's, it, it's not just black and white. Yes, you buy it. Yes, it goes there. Now there's, there, there's, there's stuff in there. I, I saw some information that someone posted the, uh, the comment or the bylaws or something from the public works utility. Again, I'm getting that wrong. I don't know what it is. Public water works. I don't know what the name of the group is, but it's not the city. Um, the city doesn't control that land or the permitting of that or whatever. It's, it's, it's the public water utilities or whatever. Um, so, but I don't know the details of that specific statement in there, in that contract between, um, the land and OEF and things like that. So I don't know. Um, so maybe a subject for another time after I've had time to do some research, talk to the people that do know and get proper information and maybe even do a live show with someone who has that information. So, so we'll see. Ah, my mouse is going crazy. Yeah, you're right, Forrest. Dave Burrell was a legend. I mean, he, he just rode that stuff. He rode out there like it was just, it was nothing. Yeah. Jess Parker, Brad Berger. Paula McGinnis. There you go. I should have I scrolled down, Paula. Oklahoma City Water Utility Trust. I had a lot of those phrases close, but I was just way off, way off point. So, ah, Paula, good. Alyssa is correct. So, Paula's the one that I need on here talking about that. She knows all this and I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think I screwed it. I don't think I screwed up anything about it. What I said too badly, but, um, uh, yeah, I definitely need someone on here that, that knows more about that.
Yeah, for us. I mean, honestly, I mean, we're fairly used to that. We're going to have a lot of parks that are going to that, I think. Um, we're just not used to it because it's been free forever. And, you know, it's just a change. Um, and they're not making the change easy. And the thing is, is I don't have a problem with passes either, as long as they're not crazy expensive. But the problem with uh, the Draper thing is just that it's difficult to get the pass. I mean, most of us want to do the pass. It's just they make it so hard to get it that it's it, it's hard to do. There's no easy way to get it. So that's that's mainly the issue, I think. I mean, I'll pay my 25 bucks to get a pass. That's no biggie, but, you know, I live two hours and 20 minutes away from Draper, so it's not very convenient for me to be able to get one unless I could do it online, and we can't do that. You have to actually go physically get it. So anyway, enough of that talk. Chris Call. Uh, Da, 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 Brad Berger, John Bauman, Nick Blades joined. Nick Blades got done with, uh, what was it, Cub Scouts? I think Cub Scouts today, so awesome. All right, well, that totally got out of out of control. So um, upcoming events, but that's good stuff, though. I love that, asking questions, uh, jumping off subject, and just talking about things, so. Definitely love that. So, <laughs> Chad says punk is still free. <laughs> that it is. You guys do great work out there. You guys have done a great job developing that trail. So, I know I know Roy kind of kicked that thing off. Now that he's moved, uh, Chad and his crew um, have uh, have really really stepped up to the plate and uh, continued continued to run with what he's done and and uh, impressed with what you guys have done. Steve Ansick checked in. Hey, Steve. <coughs> All righty. Man, this is going to be a long one. I'm going I'm to try to – I'm going to skip through these pretty quickly then, um, and we'll get to the, the main meat of this. I just want to throw out some stuff out here, and if you guys have questions, comments, additional dates of things that you want to throw out here, um, if someone can do it for me uh, – Craig was on here earlier, and I, I said something, but maybe he missed it. I, I haven't had time to look up the date for the gravel growler. If you guys can toss that up here for me, I'd appreciate that because you guys can do a quick search. I can't do that without getting distracted. So um, I was going to do that earlier today, and I just totally forgot. I got I ran out of time. So let's just go down the list. I mean, for a lot of us, uh, some of you have been doing cross. Um, I have not really done cross. Um, and I think we wrapped up with ruts and guts this past weekend. Um, turnout looked pretty good. Looked like they got some good weather and some, some, some good mud, make it a true cross race. And, um, finish out the, the season strong the season's not over. There's still some cross racing to be done, but I mean, for a lot of us locally, ruts and guts, guts is kind of the culmination of our schedule. Herb Brown, February 1. Thank you. Thank you for that. That February 1 date is a gravel growler. So we're still a ways out. I thought we were, but I couldn't remember if it was if, if, if they were sneaking it into late January this year or not. For whatever reason, I just, I don't know, I just just lost that in my head. So I'm stoked for that event. That's an that's event I've been doing since the beginning. And um, Craig McIntyre and, and the crew, um, at Spokelahoma down there, I just put on a great event. Um, I don't know what it is about that. It's just so low key and fun, but yet they still pull out some big guns to come down and race. I think Allison Tetrick was there last year. Um, I'm not even sure. I think there's some of the some of the men's. I think some of the strong strong men's uh, pros from Mensfield came out too. But still, overall, it's like it's. I mean, it's a fast race, but it's low key, cool. Cool terrain. Um, anyway, uh, that's a ways out. We'll talk more about it. So, uh, let's see. Let's start with uh, spinistry in Texas. So, I haven't done a lot of Texas races, although there's a couple I'm eyeballing right now. Um, don't know if I'll be able to to get there or not. Um, I used to spend a lot of time doing my summer training uh, when I'm doing my base training to um, um, go up to Texas during the winter months and do the frozen endurance series um that's kind of gone by the wayside just because of the weather and several bad years of just crazy crazy weather uh, but spinistry um which is well known for a lot of their races in texas they have several races and events on their schedule and i was just 
uh, Lisa Norris, my friend, um, threw a couple links out to me today and, and I was checking them out. And so we've got a couple coming up December 7th, which is, you know, this coming weekend. So we've got a thing called ride the net N E T T. I assume that's an acronym for something. And I didn't have time to look it up. I was just quickly writing these down. Cause again, I was so behind schedule today. Uh, but December 7th, uh, looks like it is a, um, it, it looked like it's real, like maybe a chunky gravel event. Um, they got 50 K hundred K hundred mile, got a variety. Um, and the way they were talking, there wasn't a whole lot of information. They were saying that, you know, a hardtail, a uh, mountain bike, uh, or a gravel bike with 40, uh, 40 tires or bigger would be great. I would assume 38 is probably okay too. So don't exactly know the terrain there, but sounded interesting. Um, it's, it's an option. It's in Paris, Texas. So not, not too far. That's pretty, I mean, it's pretty far drive, but I mean, you know, we're all looking in the, in the Dallas ish, uh, region for a lot of these races. Um, Followed up with uh, December 14th, there's another Texas race. I'm just going to do the two Texas races, and then I'll move up to the Oklahoma races. Uh, Rudolph's Revenge. Uh, I've never done that one. I, I, I'm pretty sure I know um, several people from Oklahoma have gone down and done that one, and I've heard good reviews. Uh, it's the um, Isle du Bois State Park. Hear lots of good things. This is a mountain bike race, 30-mile, uh, 40-mile, open single speed. Looks like that's it. So. Um, yeah, so it looks like a pretty cool event, December 14th. So anyway, so there's two Texas races. If you want to get some miles in, those are, you know, marathon endurance style races. Um, moving into Oklahoma. So we've got some fun rides coming up as well as some regular rides. Um, but mostly for us, uh, in Oklahoma right now, we're kind of in off season and we have several annual events that are going on as well as a new one. Uh, the first one is the Christmas Light Bike Tour by Neighborhood Bicycle Shop. Um, that's Chad and Sarah Shanks, if you guys aren't sure. They, uh, they, were, they were under the Alice uh, Bicycle umbrella, and now they've moved uh, into their own, with their own brand and their own name uh, called Neighborhood Bicycle Shop. So uh, welcome to to that new name and that new brand. Um, but December the 12th, 545 to seven o'clock, they've got a, a Christmas tree light bike tour. The event, the events out there, just go search the event. So it's pretty easy fun. Should be, should be fun. And I would imagine it's probably dress up, light your bike up. Be all cool. Um, next one is December 17th. Uh, our bike lab crew, we started this last year and had a blast and did something very similar. Um, it is the bike lab Christmas light ride through the village of Nichols Hills, uh, six to eight. And kind of the way we ran it last year, and I assume we'll probably do it this year, is um, we had um, a couple guys. I think Jeremy and uh, Ryan West rode the uh, tandem and kind of led, led the party so that we could control the speed and control everybody, keep everybody together. And uh, we had three or four guys that were just working as runners. And they would basically go up and, you know, shut down intersections for us, block intersection and block cars. And we would just fly on through and take a tour and see some cool lights and cool houses. Everybody dressed up and everybody had lights on their bikes. And it was, uh, it was a good time. And we're just cruising, not going hard. Um, I'm sure that um, um, Sarah and, and Chad's ride will be the same. So uh, come out and join both or or one. It'd be fun times. Uh, the next one is December 21st. We are looking at the Ride of the Winter Solstice, 2019 AD. So that was going to be our uh, team warm up crew again. Team warm up cycling team. T-Bird 630. Not only is this event free, but you get to taste the famous Windrix pretzel dogs. And those are awesome. So come out and get some pretzel dogs. There's usually a variety of flavor. They've got like jalapeno flavored and I don't know, regular and then some with cheese. And I don't know. There's usually like, there's usually about three different 
three different flavors of the pretzel dogs and they are delicious. So even if you come out and just like ride for, I don't know, an hour, 30 minutes, whatever. I always ride for like, you know, a little bit and cut out <laughs> and then go, just go drink beer and eat pretzel dogs, hang out in the big team warm up pub tent. So hopefully the wind won't be blowing and they'll have the, the big pub tent up. So that'll be cool too. And that takes us to January 1st, New Year. Ah, Richie Bean says there's fireball. Yes, there's always fireball out there too. That's always a good thing. In fact, I think I remember the first year that I did that. It was it was pretty cold and I rode out. I took a, I took a sip of fireball from, from Ray Trammell. I rode about, you know... 30 yards up the road and decided that ah, I'm just turning around. I rode the trail backwards and I hung out and I had about three or four more shots. And then I just cut the trail and went back to the tent <laughs> and had pretzel dogs. <laughs> All right. Oh, Herb Brown says Ted King will be there. Yeah, I heard there was going to be some pros at the gravel growler. So it was a pretty good uh, interview uh, podcast with Payson McKelvey and the, the uh, Adventure Stash with uh, Ted King. So you guys should check that out. If you guys don't listen to the Adventure Stash podcast, you should. It's uh, Payson McKelvin, uh, Orange Seal Pro Rider, and uh, our local Mr. Kai Cordes' teammate. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, welcome Carolyn Fairless, Brian Alvey, Stacy Patton, Bobby Smith, Andrew Foster. Emmy Lot Stricker and Richie Bean with the fireball comment. Uh, January 1st, New Year's. So this has been going on now for six years and our friends out at St. Crispin's, uh, Mike and Joanne and um, their crew, uh, they're going to have the sixth annual commitment day ride. Uh, St. Crispin's 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's really basically all it is. It's um, everybody comes out, hangs out and kind of enjoys the new year together and uh, gets a little ride in. There's nothing organized. It's just a, it's just a ride, um, um, ride to get together and celebrate uh, into the new year with uh, a little fitness and a little ride and a little, little, little uh, getting together and enjoy, join each other's companies and even having a cold beer. Joshua Snyder and Chris Cooper joined. Welcome guys. Okay, this is the one I'm going to toss out to you guys. So um, you guys don't have to comment here, although you can if you want to uh, create some discussion. I just want to throw um, a subject out to you guys, something that I've been thinking about and I've been running by my board. We've had multiple discussions. We have not fully resolved it. Um, because we all have some slightly different opinions. Um, and um, I would like to just toss it out to the public for once. Um, again, as I mentioned in my, my intro, normally when I'm trying to resolve something or maybe make a modification to a rule or make a change, sometimes it's something that just pops into my head. Other times it's something that someone says to me and then I research it to see if it's possible. Um, and then try to develop a possible strategy to make a change or if we can make the change. So there's a lot of research that goes into it. So um, I think a lot of people think that, you know, we just willy nilly make these choices and make these decisions. But there's actually a, a pretty big process that goes through it because for every decision that you make, there's like a snowball effect. So it, if, you know, one thing affects another thing, affects another, you know, and there's so many things that get affected by making one simple change that, you know, on the surface, most people don't realize that. And so that's, you know, puts me in, in my board in a position where <laughs> changing, you know, making decisions or changing, changing rules is sometimes difficult because we need to make the, the right choice, which we don't always make the right choice. And I'm the first to admit that. But to not make these changes is, to me, failing as well, too. Uh, sometimes you need to try a change. Sometimes you need to see if it works. If it doesn't work, we change it back. But unless you know, unless you try, you don't know. So anyway, I've been tossing around this idea for about, a, I don't know, for a couple of years. And I just sat on it last year, decided not to do it. 
Um, but we had a we had a repeat of almost the exact same thing happen this year. And uh, I, I, something that just, again, it's been in my mind, and I see pros and cons, and I wanted to throw it out to you guys. I don't want to really going to give you any any lead to what perspective that I take on this. Um, but the idea is, and our cat twos, again, cat twos only, men, 19 to 29, and 30 to 39. If you look at the numbers and you look at the um, groups that we have in these two age groups, we have almost nobody in the cat to 19 to 29 men. One, two, three, I think the maximum that we had was a one, one race sometime this year. We had four people. Um, I think we only had one meet the minimum this year. And that's been, that's been pretty much the norm for the past three to four years. I went back three, four years and looked at the numbers and the numbers are just like that for that category. I don't have, I don't have a reason why I don't know why. Um, but we're basically giving awards and prizes to a category that just barely exists. So I'm thinking that we should possibly attempt to do what we've done with the cat one and combine it and make it one category, 19 to 39. So no longer have two separate categories, put them together, race them together. Um, that's my thought and, and not separate them out, not just start them together and then still separate them out. I'm talking like, no, stick them all together, 19 to 29, 30 to 39. So basically it's going to be 19 to 39, just like the cat ones. They start at the same time. They're scored together. Series points are, are counted together. The whole works. So that's the thought to do that or not. Um, right now they are separate categories. Um, sometimes they do start together just because there's only one or two. So they just say, Hey, you want to start with the other group? That way you have someone to ride with. Um, but they're still scored separately, still points are separate. And I propose the option to possibly combine the two. So that's the thought. And I'm going to toss that out to you guys to mull over. You don't have to respond here. You can give us some thought if you want. If you want to respond, more, more power to you. Uh, and I'll try to, try to converse. Um, I will probably continue on after I see if I miss anybody here. Um, with the next topic, and then I'll go back and look and see if anybody said anything. But I want to throw this out to you guys to see what your opinion is. Danny Amajoin, what's happening? Pete Singleton, Chris Cooper, weighted results. I don't even know what you mean there. That's too much math for me. I'm not sure, you know, throwing a pun out, you know, weighted versus weighted versus weight. Katie Winters, what's happening? And Trish Draper. All right. <laughs> George says do it. All right. Well, you guys uh, mull that over and you can comment or not, but I'm going to go ahead and move on with the uh, last subject. Well, you weren't. Weighted scores. <laughs> no pun intended. So Chris Cooper says he wasn't, wasn't throwing a joke out there. Weighted scores. No, you know, actually, you know, I think I know what you're talking about, Chris. Um, and, and that's not really for uh, the individual points. I think you're talking for the team challenge possibly uh, with weighted scoring. Um, that has been tossed out. Um, I have just not had a chance to really, really run the numbers and think that through. So that's not something that I can make a move on. That's a mathematical thing um, for me. Um, I don't know. I just have to look at it and see and find a proper way to do it, a fair way to do it. I'm, I'm talking about something completely. I, I think I'm talking about the same thing. Yeah, Chris is talking. Yeah, Cooper's talking about the team. He was. He threw out the possibility of weighted scoring. Uh, that's for another subject. So, uh, for the team challenge, I don't. I don't want to get. <laughs> I don't want to get confused. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, Greg, I'd have to run the numbers. Um, I haven't separated the numbers between the categories. Um, I think the I think the numbers are very the fairly similar, really. Um, I mean, I, I think our, our numbers between Cat 1, Cat 2, and Cat 3 percentage-wise are about the same. Um, cat 3s have always been the bigger group. Uh, cat 2, 
next, and then Cat one, the smaller group. Um, however, um, we have increased um, each year the past three years. Overall, everybody total. It's not been significant. I mean, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 riders more, something of that nature. Um, I'd have to go back and look. I did that math here a while back when I was researching some, some insurance options. Um, but, um, but yeah, the, the percentages in each of the groups are still similar, but overall we've increased slightly, uh, not, not significantly, but slightly. John Shear says combine them. Welcome Ashley Treadwell. Oh, let's see what do we got here. Combine the groups. Russ nicely joined. Stephen Cordes joined. What's happened Stephen Cordes? Uh, Forrest, they're they're close. Um, yeah, they are close. But the thing is, is with our 19 to 29 group, the numbers are so small that it's really hard to tell because we really don't have a good comparison base. Um, I mean, the the kid that won last year was actually I don't know 13. He he raced up. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, I agree, Quincy. And that was kind of my thinking was just the group size and riding by yourself. Um, I mean, still we could start, you know, start them together and then score them separately. But the whole point is, is that, I mean, if, I mean, if only one or two people are meeting the minimum every year in that age group, then they're really not competing with anybody. I mean, they're just showing up and if they show up and do enough races, then, you know, they win. So. <laughs> Kevin Wagner. <laughs> Kevin Wagner checks in and says, hi, I rode my bike. Considering you've been building that house, working, working your butt off doing that, heck, no wonder. I bet you're glad to get out and ride your bike, get a little stress relief going. All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, you guys feel free to discuss that and talk about that, but I'm going to move on to my last category. Um, I was worried about the day going short, and guess what? I've done my usual and we're, we're running long. So we start racing in two months. How have you been preparing to get ready for Tour de Dirt 2020? That's the big question. Have you been preparing? Uh, are you just starting to prepare? Did you take time off the bike? Do you do specific training? Do you have a plan? Those are just some questions that I want to throw out here to lead into this discussion. So, you know, I, I get this a lot and I get this from a lot of different people. And it, I mean, a lot of it just depends on the person. But, you know, I saw a comment on one of the threads. We were talking about something the other day. I'm not going to name the thread, but, um, or call out anybody. But saw a couple people in a couple statements came out and they were like, you know, when I released the schedule and they were like, Oh, February, man, I guess I better get to training. And, you know, I hear that all the time. And I just, to me, that's funny. Um, I mean, we're two months out and you haven't been training. Um, it's, you, you're kind of behind the curve. So, I mean, if you have some fitness and you have something going on, then yeah, you could probably buckle down and in two months. If you, if you, if you get busy with a very specific plan, you can be ready by February, but the reality of it is if you haven't been training and you're just now starting, you've lost all of that base training. You've lost all that fitness that you built from before, and now you're starting over from scratch. And I see so many people do that. They race the series, and then they just, like, stop riding. And then they rush right before the season to start training again. And the whole thing is is that it just – you don't build on what you – did the year before and so basically you spend every year just starting over again and um I, I mean i get that you know that's you know cycling's not as important to some people probably as it as it is me and you know and other people have busier lives than i do i mean i i'm pretty busy but my kids are a little older so it gives me a little bit of freedom um my and my work schedules um 
I mean, I, I work a lot, but my, my schedule is very flexible. So it allows for me to, to train as I need. And I'm uh, very dedicated. So, um, so yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of my thoughts on that. So, you know, the, and the second question was, did you take some time off the bike? Um, people ask me that all the time. Honestly, they're like, you know, you, when you take a break, did you take a break? You know, do you, do you take a week off? Do you take a couple weeks off? And it's like, um, I, I don't really. I really don't. Um, I, I never stop riding. Now, I do recover. Um, you know, my coach has been throwing training plans out for me, and I've skipped, I bet I've skipped um, two workouts a week for the past three weeks. I'm still doing my harder workouts, but I'm skipping a lot of the other workouts. Uh, main reason is, is because I was, uh, I'm busy doing trail work right now. Um, so I'm still getting some physical activity and, um, um, having, having, having a little me thing going on. So I've been trying to take some time off and let that recover. And, um, I rode really hard tonight. So that seems to be working. I rode pretty, I rode pain free tonight. So, so thumbs up. So I'm, I'm, you know, but the thing is, is even my break, I'm still riding my bike. I still ride my bike five times a week, even if it's 30 minutes around the block or, you know, this time of year with the, no sunlight, I, I, I do Zwift pretty much 24 seven. I, every, every ride I do is at this time of year is going to be in the trainer. Um, all my training is very specific. Um, so yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> George GT. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> Man, we can go down. You guys, you guys are comedians. Uh Daryl, okay, cool. Daryl Daryl agrees to combine. So far the consensus is combined in two categories. Trip Harrison says, I've been just beating Kevin Str Strava segment times. <laughs> Hey, those are some good. Those are some good ones to chase. I guarantee those are fast. So, Herb Brown's with me mostly. Herb, you and me both, buddy. This time of year, that's all I do. I love it. It's convenient. It's easy. I have a very specific workout. I rarely spend more than an hour and twenty minutes, which is what I think I did tonight on the trainer. Um, went faster than that because I was doing some. Um, I was doing some intervals, and. Um, access some longer intervals with some spikes in them. And those kind of, those kind of hurt. <laughs> um, watched me a Joe Rogan podcast while I was doing it. So, you know, Hey, George says he's been carb loading since <laughs> the end of 2019. Uh, oh, Nick. Yes. You've been running. And Jeremy black has been mentally preparing for the beatings that he'll be taking. Cause Jeremy black is catting up to cat one next year. You know, it's kind of the philosophy that we live by at Bike Lab. We don't do things the easy way. Well, Kevin Wagner, you're gonna have to talk. I, mean, you ex ex oh, I think you crashed or hurt yourself or something, didn't you, Kevin? So why why'd your season end two weeks ago? Yeah, Forrest, and, and you know that is a thing too. So Forrest Smith, which is great to have him on here. Uh, he says back in the day, he would plan on peaking in May and June. So February races were just training. Um, if he still raced, he, he'd do the same thing. He's just not racing right now. And, and, and really, a lot of us do that, too. Um, I mean, uh, I guess my point is, is don't, you know, start your training now after having stopped your training. Just build on the training that you did before and properly lead into the season and then build throughout the season and prepare for the, you know, important races uh, down the road and, and those important races will be different for different people. Um, when you want to peak, I mean, so, but yeah, very, very good. Jay Black agreed. He struggles in the winter, like a lot of us do, um, but his width and his smart turner help ease that. And another thing that I'm really thinking about doing Jeremy, and that's something that I used to do that I just haven't recently and, and again, I, I, we used to travel to Texas and do those frozen endurance series races 
Um, so maybe just traveling to do some of these endurance races around in the winter. Um, it just seems crazy, but it is doable. Um, I've done it in the past. I don't see why we can't do it now. I mean, I've done races and, you know, freezing and we did some the other night at night, you know, at night at, you know, at, at McMurtry. So it's all doable. Uh, Kevin Wagner. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Just have it. Just have it for us. Oh, Brian McGinnis. He had to bring. I, I still never figured out that whole thing. Brian McGinnis says we just need a reason to have a woman screaming at a white cat at a dinner table relevant to bikes. I still never figured out that whole meme. I tried to have my kids explain it to me, and I wasn't receptive to it. So it just seems really dumb. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I think I've, I've answered all those specific questions. And then, then the last question was, do you do specific training or just ride? And the thing that I wanted to put there is, is that it's different for everybody. Everybody's at a different level. Um, Jeremy, we're not going to talk about that one. So there, <laughs> there's better ways to go about that. And these, and these frozen endurance races are in the daytime. Not in dark. Um, specific training or not, or just riding. So everybody's at different levels. So sometimes, you know, if you're a beginning rider, just getting miles on the bike is beneficial. Um, going out and experiencing trails, taking trips, riding with your friends, um, you know, doing a whole day ride where you're on the bike for three hours, and even if you're stopping and chatting and, you know, gathering up with all the group, you know, spending that much time out on the trail just riding is good for you. And we still love to do that. I love to do that. I mean, that's great for, you know, that's great for the mind um, and, and good for the body. Um, but the one thing that I do want to, um, you know, talk about is that it's something I call jump miles. Um, I see a lot of people that are going out riding and riding with no purpose and they're like, yeah, I rode this many miles and I did this many miles. And I'm like, well, what'd you do with that? And they're like, I was just riding my bike. Well, when you reach a certain level and you're trying to improve your fitness and you're trying to improve your skills, you need something that's more specific and just riding your bike doesn't always do it, do it. And in fact, sometimes I call them junk miles. You know, if you go out and just every day, you just go out and ride your bike the same you know, there's going to be a point of diminishing return where you're not, you're not making yourself faster. You're not getting better. You're not gaining more skill. You're just riding your bike. And granted, I get it. That's I, some people, that's what they want to do, but this is to the dirt. I'm talking racing. Um, I'm assuming that a lot of you guys want to get better and faster or else you wouldn't be tuning in. And the whole point is to push yourself and specify. Um, I often see people that, um, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, I rode so many thousand miles last year. And I'll go out and look at Strava or, you know, Garmin Connect. And I'm like, yeah, I rode um, 7,000 miles less than you did. I'm still better than you. I can still ride faster than you. You know, so miles don't always add up to better. It's, 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 it's the old, you know. Quote, it's quality over quantity. Now, there is a time for quantity, don't get me wrong. We've just kind of passed that part, and we're still kind of sort of in that stage where you're building miles and you're building base and you're doing miles. Still kind of in that time frame. I'm kind of phasing out of that. We've been in that for about a month. Kind of still doing that a little bit, but I'm moving more into sweet spot um, tempo type stuff in addition to base. That's just the time of year it is. And um, we'll start finding tune that as we get closer to February. And then I always supplement my normal training with uh, crazy races. Uh, you know, we do, you know, gravel racing, endurance, stuff like that in between through to dirt, starting in February all the way through end of the year. So, yeah. <coughs> all right.
right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go up and just see if I have any comments. So, uh, Kevin Peake joined in. What's up, Kevin Peake? I haven't seen you in a while. Chris Cooper just finished base mid one on Trainer Road and started base two today. That's right. So that's kind of – you and I are – I think you're probably um, a few weeks um, – uh, behind me, you're still doing, you're still pushing pretty big base. And I've started kind of phasing out of that a little bit, even though I still am doing that. I'm doing base endurance miles in between my, my, uh, my tempo and, and, uh, sweet spot workouts now. So. And Kevin Wagner, that's exactly a good point, though. Just riding doesn't make you faster, but it sure does maintain. You're absolutely correct. It will maintain what you have so that when you are ready to start focusing on the proper training, then you don't lose your fitness. That's exactly right. So the key is just not stopping, um, you know, and change it up, do things to have fun. That's why I do so many different events, just to keep it fresh and keep it fun. And Jay Black, you are correct, although I have been slacking so much in that area for like the past three months, four months. I feel bad. I got to get back into it. Uh, Jay Black says all endurance athletes should find time to lift heavy things and put them back down again repeatedly. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to get I got to get back to that doing that, too. So there you go, Kevin Peake, for sure. Time to get you been back out time to get back in. Hey, Amber Simon. I think I missed you. Uh, Rue, Rue Horn checked in. What's happening, guys? Uh, good night, Forrest. Forrest is headed out. So I don't think I've missed any comments. There, Gomez checked in. <laughs> I've hit most of the comments. So, all righty. That's, that's really about it. Um, I'll. Uh, See if we've missed anything. Doing some rock climbing in the off season. Steven Treister joined just in time for me to close up shop. What's happening, Steven Treister? Herb Brown, 12 ounces at a time. I don't know. Where are these 12 ounces? I haven't read. I don't have my glasses. So too many of those. These kill me. I'm trying to cut back a little bit. Did a pretty good job. Two tonight. It's not bad. So. All righty. As usual, if you guys have questions, comments, anything like that, feel free to uh, hit me up. You can post it on here, but honestly, there's going to be so many um, comments on here that's really hard to find. Um, even when I get tagged in it, it's still hard to find it in the list. So uh, if you have something that you really want an answer to or you, you, need, a, you need a response from me from, um, probably just, just, just message me privately or post it on my, my page or something, or just throw it out on the Turtle Dare page in a separate thread. So, um, all right. Last scroll. Boom, boom, boom. All right. I don't see anything. So, all right. Had a, had a good one. I kind of winged it a little bit, ran a little bit long with some of the alternate subjects that we got on to, but now we've got a couple subjects um, to bring up for, for future episodes. So, I'm out. You guys enjoy. Have a good night. Get some good training in. We'll see you.